What's going on YouTube? So today I have this uh, vintage power supply. Uh, I got this at an auction at a facility that I was decommissioning a few months ago. I got this piece and uh, several other pieces of test gear uh, from a uh, electronics testing facility. I won't mention any names. But I uh, picked this up at auction dirt cheap. Uh, didn't even power it on. Didn't really know if it worked. Um, so today we're going to be plugging it in, take a look at it. Uh, probably remove the casing today and then take a look at its accuracy with the voltmeter as well as the quality of the waveform of the, the quality of power that's produced with an oscilloscope. So this is a Kebco 0 to 40 volt power supply. Uh, it's got uh, front side fuse here, slow blow fuse. It's got uh, short circuit current adjustment. So this is where you adjust the output of the current. Uh, we have a voltage adjustment uh, selector knob for voltage current and short circuit minus current. Uh, so that would be the shunt load. Um, and then we have positive ground and negative. What's interesting on the back side that you don't see in power supplies nowadays are all these terminals that are back here and all the options that come available to it. Uh, so we got uh, remote turn on voltage. This is if you wanted to put an external potentiometer somewhere else uh, besides the front of the power supply to adjust the voltage. Uh, remote error sensing, which this would determine probably short circuits, things along those lines. Um, and then our current regulation output, uh, which you can set back here, hook up stuff uh, back here instead of on the front terminals if you had something that needed a dedicated power supply, but you didn't want to use the banana plugs on the, on the front of it. So let me zoom in on this. Uh... So it's a model ABC. 40-0.5M, uh, so it's a 0 to 40 volt, 0 to half an amp, 0.5 amps uh, total output, uh, which is shown here, 0 0.05 amps, or I'm sorry, uh, 0 0.5 amps, uh, half an amp. It's multi-voltage, 120, 230 volt. Uh, this, I'm not sure why it says 50 to 440. Um, I wouldn't think that it's capable of, of that type of input, um, and I'm not even sure what power runs off that unless that's the frequency, um, but I fail to believe that this is a 50 hertz uh, piece of test gear since it was manufactured and used here in the U.S. Um, and then it gives our fuse rating. It's got a slow blow fuse. Looks like a one amp or half an amp. So the first thing we're going to do, get this thing flipped around is hook it up to the voltmeter. Now I haven't done any adjustment to this whatsoever, haven't tweaked it, haven't even so much as looked at it. Uh, I did power it on earlier to make sure that it did at least power up without letting the smoke out. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is hook up a voltmeter to it and see how accurate uh, this display gauge is. So I tried to look up the vintage of this uh, particular power supply. It doesn't have any kind of date on it. So I pulled the documentation from Kebco um, and here we show it's an ABC 40-05M, 0 to 40 volt, uh, 0 to half an amp. And this document was produced in 1963. Uh, so that makes this power supply 53, 54 years old. Um, so I'm interested to see if it can still hold up to what it was designed to do. Um, after 50 some odd years of, of, I'm sure, heavy industrial use and getting knocked around and banged around. As you can tell, it's not in the best of shape. So let's jump right into it. We'll turn on my multimeter here. We'll hook up our test leads. Looks like we're making good contact there. So let's go up to 10 volts, 
try and get it as close as I can. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Uh, the camera's kind of at an angle. Let me get you straight face on with it. So it looks like the display might be just a hair off. Uh, but, you know, my multimeter uh, is displaying in thousandth of a volt. Um, so it may be a, a little bit, this display may be a little bit off. Uh, but that's pretty accurate and the, the potentiometer uh, for the voltage adjustment is an extremely fine and it's an infinite uh, potentiometer so it's not like uh, only makes one complete revolution or 90% of a revolution uh, it continues to spin around so you have infinite adjustment uh, in terms of voltage and you can get this thing dialed in within a, a thousandth of a volt if you are working on something that critical so let's go all the way up with the voltage see what this thing will go up to so the potentiometer is maxed out uh it's at 41.3 volts um, the display is off quite a bit that looks like it's probably about 50 or 43 or 44 volts um, so the display is not entirely accurate uh, but if you're working on anything that requires that level of precision you're going to be using a more modern uh, multimeter along with it so let's turn this back down We'll go back to 10 volts as best we can. There we go. And let me get you zoomed out. We'll get our oscilloscope hooked up. So one thing to note, if you hook an oscilloscope up, oscilloscope up to anything, uh, you'll want to make sure to disconnect the multimeter um, because the oscilloscope can pick up feedback from the multimeter. Um, and it'd also be picking up the inductance on the leads and a bunch of other stuff. So to get an accurate uh, display of, of what's going on, you'll want to disconnect any other devices, uh, apart from any electronics devices that you have hooked up to it for powering or testing. So we'll hook up our positive lead, and we'll ground out the probe to the ground terminal. So that looks like a pretty clean, uh, pretty clean waveform. There's no real distortion in it. Uh, there is a little bit of clipping. It looks like up, up at the top and the bottom of the wave. Um, and that could just be, uh, it, it's probably the, the regulation circuit where it starts getting up to where the voltage it needs to be and then clips it and then comes back down. Um, so that is pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to zoom you out. I'm going to hook up my other little Chinese power supply up here. Uh, this is a 0 to 15 volt, 0 to 2 amp power supply. I'm going to hook that up to my second channel of my, my oscilloscope just to see what the difference is in between the two um, and what kind of, of quality we're getting. Uh, after 50 some odd years on this power supply and then my Chinese power supply that's about a year old. We'll turn it on, we'll set this to 10 volts. The voltage is kind of arbitrary because um, the, the oscilloscope is going to pick up the waveform or the quality of the, the wave more so than the voltage. The voltage will make a minor minor difference on the oscilloscope. Um, it'll just show a different height here on the display. So we'll set our oscilloscope to auto.
think I got a bad connection. Okay, not sure what's going on here. Give me just a second. Let me find out why this is not picking this up. Okay, there we go. Had a bad connection on the ground. So let me get you zoomed in here. Set our voltage to match. Switch that to auto. And then let me move that waveform out of the way. So you can see in the red line here is our 54 year old power supply uh, made by Kepco. And on the blue line here is my cheap Chinese uh, best brand power supply. And you can tell the difference in the quality of the power. Um, you know, the red line is, is perfectly shaped waveforms. Um, and the other one coming from my Chinese power supply is just kind of jagged and all over the place. Uh, so let me get zoomed in a little bit here, change the time base. Yeah, so you can see it a little better there. Uh, this is what I would consider to be very high quality power, the, the red line out of the Kepco power supply. And then what I have down here, this blue line, that's just, you know, it, it's got a lot of noise in it. Uh, it's inferior electronics in, in the regulation circuit. Um, for most everything hobby electronics related, Arduinos and stuff, this will make no difference. Uh, but it is nice to know when you're debugging a circuit that may be dependent on uh, clean power with no power spikes, that you have a nice regulated power input um, and not kind of this jagged one that's all over the place. So let me adjust the voltage down. Yeah, so here we can see that nasty kind of spike. It looks like it's going as the power supply ramps up, it goes over voltage, starts clipping, comes back down, goes too low. Uh, another circuit probably catches it, brings it back up, and then comes back down on the other side of the wave. Um, and we can see here there's a slight bit of distortion down here at the bottom end on the red wave on the Kepco power supply. Uh, but overall, it's a, it's a nice and smooth arc. There are no jagged uh, edges or peaks in it. Let me move these down on top of each other. Went the wrong way. Give me just a second.
yeah, so that pretty much sums it up. Uh, Chinese power supply is junk. Uh, this 50 some odd year old power supply, it's still got an awesome looking waveform. It's, I know that if I hook it up to any of my projects, it's gonna provide me nice clean power, uh, no distortion, no clipping, no uh, kind of high frequency feedback um, that might cause problems in other, in more sensitive projects um, to where they're susceptible to any type of EMF or electromagnetic interference um, that might be coming out of that Chinese power supply or feedback coming from the power wires. So uh, that's it for this power supply. Uh, I think I might throw another video together, tear it down um, and take a look what the difference is on the build quality in this Kebco here and then in my cheap Chinese power supply up here. Um, so that's it for today. Uh, if you got any questions, post them below. Uh, if you got any comments for videos, also post that below or send me a message. Uh, if you like this video, please rate and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.